No, I want to share you about uh, first targets in Turkey, then we come to techniques of torture, and then the after effects of torture, and also uh, I share with you some of the letters and interventions we have had so far about Turkey, either to the Turkish government or to the United Nations or to some regional agencies. I will end up with a conclusion about Turkey. First of all, I come to targets. Uh, anybody can be a target in Turkey if that person uh, is uh, suspected of doing activities against the government, specifically those who are suspected of collaboration with uh, PKK, uh, Alabi, people of Alevi faith. Uh, so it is my understanding that uh, Alevis are the largest minority in Turkey. And anybody who has been uh, helping Kurdish people, whether educational or human rights training or uh, advocacy, they are targets of the government and they have gone through torture and they have come to us. Uh, another uh, category of people are uh, members of LGBTQ community. Uh, it is a little bit tricky because as we know, there is no anti-LGBTQ legislation in Turkey, uh, but uh, police is highly homophobic and they use other excuses to harass them and torture them. Also members of LGBTQ community uh, are tortured by the community who are provoked against them and sometimes by family members. Uh, another category of people are those who work for freedom of conscience, and freedom of assembly and freedom of religion. Among my clients, I had a Jewish activist and a person who was suspected of conversion. Uh, again, they use other excuses to torture them. I come to um, uh, uh, techniques of torture. First of all, let me tell you that uh, uh, they can use any technique and uh, at any moment, uh, depending on the weakness of their subjects. And also uh, in different countries, they use something that is native and people are sensitive to, to that. Uh, the, the technique of torture is, uh, in Turkey is similar to other countries. Uh, flogging, uh, weeping, hanging, um, uh, all si other si um, physical torture, like uh, preventing the witness, victim from having water, having food, sleeping. And um, also I'm very, very upset to tell you that um, uh, rape has been also used occasionally not systematically, as a technique of torture. So physical torture is always combined uh, with uh, psychological torture. These include uh, first constant harassment, threats, we kill you, we kill your family members, we rape you, we rape your family members. And also, uh, forcing uh, the prisoner to witness other people uh, being tortured. These are some of the techniques used by uh, Turkish police and security forces. Now I come to after effects of torture. Torture and the trauma resulted from torture does not go away. 
it will remain for the rest of one's life. And it becomes a part of the psychology of, of the survivor. We have some people who have done very well vis-a-vis -vis the experience of torture, converting their trauma into something constructive. We have also people who have become paranoid due to torture. All we can do is to stabilize their condition. In between, almost 90% of survivors need help at different levels. They, most, of the, the, most of them suffer from what we call it post-traumatic stress disorder. There are three symptoms, three categories of symptoms for post-traumatic stress disorder. One is avoidance. Sometimes they avoid people, they avoid places, they avoid everything or everywhere that reminds them of uh, their torture. Some, they avoid police officers in, on the road. They even avoid people in uniform. Sometimes they avoid their family members and they have a tendency to remain in loneliness. And another symptom is uh, intrusion. Sometimes something intrudes in, in your life. It become, becomes you paralyzed. You feel that everything that happened to you is coming back to you, not in dream, but while you are awake. So, uh, as if you are in a, in a movie, we call it flashbacks. And people who go through flashbacks back may lose their connection with the outside world, becoming disassociated. And there are hyperarousal also, the third symptom. So, bad dreams, lack of concentration, forgetfulness amnesia, and difficulty sleeping, we call it uh, insomnia. But uh, the last thing I want to tell you is uh, my optimism about Turkey. Turkey is a civil society. Turkey has a deep-rooted tradition of secularism, separation of religion, from the government. Turkey has contributed to the world's art and literature. We know that sooner rather than later, Turkey will be back to its feet and torture and other degrading treatment or punishment will be vanished from Turkey. Thank you, uh, Ezat, for this uh, clear uh, personal uh, testimony about victims. Um, we noticed uh, the sad and immense and lasting impact torture has on the life quality of the victims, but also the resilience of a lot of people that try to fight back, even without forgetting or uh, without having solved all their problems, but uh, and also thank you for the, the work you do for these people. Uh, you emphasize that most of torture comes from police and security. That's also in the report that we have. Uh, there are, came in uh, some questions, uh, not all questions will be answered immediately, but uh, two questions I would like to answer. Uh, someone is asking, what can the European Union do about these things? Well, I think that uh, helping the victims is one thing that should be done more out of Europe and is not really structurally organized, but also the fact that Europe is working, the European Union, on the Magnitsky Act. And people know what the Magnitsky Act is. It's a possibility to sanction not only countries, but also institutions and persons in a country 
uh, and so the, the perpetrators of uh, torture could be uh, targeted by that, could help. And of course, the, the stronger position of the European Union towards Turkey is really needed and should be, should be uh, pushed harder than we ever did. There was a question of Selim Allen, who said, as I did not mention, member of Gulen Moong as target. Uh, of course, they are also target, but I suppose that for the moment, not yet victims from that uh, part came already to uh, the center of ESAT. Uh, the next one is Eran Doan. Eran Doan is, uh, and we will try to do that in each webinar, someone who, uh, who is a victim himself, first-hand experience, if we can say that in a euphemistic, sadly way. Adım Erhan Doğan, Türkiye, Türkiye'den, Türkiye'den Elazığ şehrinden. Evli üç çocuk babasıyım. Mesleğim öğretmenlik. Ankara'da görev yapıyordum. Bu 15 Temmuz olaylarından sonra, iki hafta sonra iş yerinde polisler tarafından gözaltına alındım. Ee, polisler iş yerine geldiklerinde e, birkaç arkadaşla beraber iş yerindeydik. Orada bizi gözaltına e, aldıkları e, andan itibaren bize şiddet uygulamaya başladılar. E, i̇ş yerinde bizi işte dövmeye başladılar. Sonra bir gece iş yerinde tuttular. E, sabah erken saatlerde e, bizi Ankara Tem e, şube denilen e, polis merkezine götürdüler. Orada bir e, spor salonu vardı. E, o spor salonuna götürdüler bizi. E, spor salonuna ilk götürdüklerinde üzerimize e, turuncu e, kıyafetler e, giydirdiler. Ben ilk spor salonuna girdiğim andan itibaren spor salonunda birçok insan vardı. Yüzlerce insan vardı. Ve hepsinin üzerinde e, turuncu kıyafetler bulunuyordu. E, hepsi e, spor salonunun... E, duvar diplerine oturtulmuştu ve hepsinin elleri kelepçeliydi. Sonra bizim ellerimiz de arkadan kelepçeleyip e, o şekilde spor salonunda e, duvar dibine e, koydular. Daha sonra e, bir hafta boyunca burada bize e, işkence yapmaya başladılar. E, bu işkenceleri yaparken işkence yapacakları insanları spor salonundan çıkarıp e, başka e, bir alana götürüp orada işkence yapıyorlardı. Ee, Tabi işkence e, bir gündüz orada bulunan polislerin götürüp işkence e, yapanlar vardı. Bir de gece saat 11-12 gibi gelip sabah e, 4-5 gibi kaybolan e, bir ekip vardı. Onların e, geldiği dönemde e, yaptıkları işkenceler çok ağırdı. E, hayatımın en zor anları diyebilirim. E, yapılan işkencelere tahammülün çok zor olduğu bir e, Dönem geçirdim. Eşim ve çocuklarımla tehdit edildim. E, bu tehditleri aldığımda e, intihar etmeye düşündüm. Cezaevi şartları da çok ağırdı. E, 14-15 kişilik koğuşlarda e, ortalama 45-55 kişi e, kalıyorduk. E, şartları çok e, ağır, e, koşulları çok ağır. E, Sağlık e, imkanları, hijyen koşulları çok e, kısıtlı e, alanlardı. Bütün e, imkanım olsa e, bütün dünyaya Türkiye'de yapılan şu anda bu zulümlerin e, ne kadar ağır olduğunu ve işkenceden insanların öldüğünün duyurulması gerektiğine inanıyorum. E, ve bu işkenceyi yapanların da bu işkencelerin kendilerinin yanına kar kalmayacağını bilmelerini istiyorum. Uh, as you saw, it was a clear statement uh, from... Uh, Elan, who suffered uh, himself clearly from that situation uh, shortly after the coup. First, we had a very important uh, question to say, if we look at this situation of torture and we say it is actually ordered, not tolerated, there we have some discussions possible, but it is systematic, so it's not really linked to 15 July. 15 July coup is rather... Uh, let's say, an excuse and not to reason. Uh, uh, sometimes for Joyce, it's clearly protected. And then the question is, does that not call for an intervention of or justifies the intervention of 
uh, another state of the Council of Europe, because the European Convention on Human Rights on Article 33 says that any state can uh, complain to the European Court. It happens not a lot of time. It is so only, only sometimes, actually. Uh, and would that not justify? I can think, I think I can clearly say, and we should, uh, I think, uh, in the tribunal or afterwards or for another way, really ask uh, at least one European country to do that. Because isn't it clear we have here a gross violation of a member of the Council of Europe that is systematic. And I think indeed to answer your question that it would be appropriate for a state that is member of the Council of Europe and says that the rule of law is important to indeed start such a, a procedure which has a high symbolic value, of course, but also politically and legally is an important uh, step. But then we go further with uh, another contributor, uh, Mushek Yekmalian. He is uh, working in the World Organization Against Torture and we'll, he will share us uh, his experiences on, on torture. So I'll talk about the MCT perspective uh, on the practice and the immunity of torture in Turkey from standpoint of global anti-torture movement also. A uh, fight against torture is a positive obligation of the state, is used Kogens, a not derogable right and is a crime under international law. And the crime against humanity is a widespread and systemic. Uh, the reality in the world is unfortunately very different. The OMCT's uh, SOS torture network with more than 200 member organizations worldwide confirms the widespread practice of torture in many countries of the world. And as uh, was already said, according to Amnesty International, during the last five years in more than 140 countries, torture was exercised and nearly uh, half of the respondents of the questions related to torture and custody are sure that torture is happening in custody and more than 80% of people want to have stronger laws and uh, policies in place to prevent torture. However, one third of the respondents also think that tor torture can be justified. That's the picture of our societies, unfortunately. Uh, reflecting on Turkey, historically Turkey had a very difficult transition to democratization and the respect for fundamental rights and that transition has unfortunately reversed in many times, similar to what we see with the current political leadership. Torture was always a central issue and especially within the closed institutions. Periodically, political instability was also part of the history of Turkey for several decades, and the military uh, traditionally played a significant role in formation of state institutions. Hence, the brutality of law enforcement and criminal justice systems after several coup d'etats that happened in 20th century. In 1918s, torture was mostly used against the political opponents, Kurdish parties, leftist parties, and against some not yet fully formed civil society and few human rights lawyers and defenders. Significant reform effort with some reduction in torture came as part of the European integration process, which included rule of law reforms. The first decade of 2000s was time for great hopes, when in 2003 the policy of zero tolerance towards torture was declared. However, uh, the last coup d'etat attempt in 2016 failed and uh, triggered a counter reaction and torture became more brutal, indiscriminate, widespread in Turkey, especially against the army servicemen who were either part of the coup attempt or were suspected of supporting them. This has been characterized by a type of violations in response to the coup, but equally by the, the destruction of the uh, protection system. A lot of judges were released from their positions, state officials, and uh, their replacements often had no uh, experience on uh, work with torture prevention. But even before 2016, the military operations intensified in southeastern provinces of Turkey against Kurdish fighters in 2015. And uh, Entire residential districts became war zones, like Sur districts of Diyarbakir and many others. The armed conflict in Southeast is still ongoing, 
and the level of violence and repression is not subsiding, unfortunately. As for the findings of the UN Office for High Commissioner for Human Rights and UN Special Rapporteur, the UNOHCHR in its reports uh, from 2017 and 18 documented the use of different forms of torture and ill treatment in custody, including severe beatings, threats of sexual assault, and actual sexual assault, electric shocks, and waterboarding. Based on accounts collected by OHCHR, the acts of torture and ill treatment generally appeared to aim at extracting confessions or forcing detainees to denounce other individuals. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment or Punishment visited Turkey in November 16. Uh, in November 2016 and found that torture was widespread following the failed coup, particularly at uh, the time of arrest and subsequent detention. Um, the wide use of hate speech and propaganda, demonizing of political opponents, as well as minority groups, mainly Kurds, created an atmosphere where, for example, torture against Kurds is seen as something normal in large groups of society. With the atmosphere of fear, the official numbers of torture complaints also do not reflect the reality. In circumstances of non-functioning national preventive mechanism that published this prison visit after four years only, which was virtually amorphous and uh, useless, it's difficult to talk about institutional protection also. Uh, so it's fair to say that the institutional safeguards are only made for the purpose of the fulfilling some recommendations from internationals and also uh, we're on verbal level to demonstrate uh, commitment. In reality, neither the MPM nor the National Inquiry Commission for the State of Emergency Measures or Human Rights and Equality Institute of Turkey look into the problematic issues of torture, discrimination or non-compliance of the emergency decrees with human rights standards and own constitution. The fact that emergency decrees are still in force some two and a half years after the state of emergency was lifted, leaves no space for illusions or optimism in relation to the current political leadership of Turkey. Armed conflict in Southeast is still ongoing and the individual torture related complaints are met with populistic statements and no criminal cases have been initiated against any perpetrator. Perpetrators have no fear and openly act despite the famous zero tolerance policy towards torture declared back in 2003. As one of these scholars, uh, in, when I was preparing for this uh, intervention, was rightly saying that all the policies of zero problem or zero tolerance have failed with the current government, including the one uh, of zero problems with the neighbors, where there are zero neighbors without problems in Turkey. And the same goes for the zero tolerance policy towards torture, where there is uh, absolutely uh, clear evidence that it's also a failure. The response from EU or other or international community in whole was shamefully insufficient, given the magnitude of the violence and suffering, as well as the numbers of uh, victims. No any other authoritarian regime has enjoyed such a cozy and comfortable indifference encouraging further crackdown. Despite all the existing leverages at its disposal, the EU is clearly acting not in line with its declared values. Thanks a lot for your attention and sorry for a very quick uh, talk today. Thank you. Thank you. You were talking quick because you had a lot to say. That's uh, the best we can have. And it was a very systematic uh, exposure what uh, uh, what we should do. I would like, meanwhile, also uh, to uh, ask to respond to some questions that we had. Um, and a bit linked to what uh, Mushek said. Uh, so, so some uh, participants say, yeah, but you should understand the very difficult situation Turkey is in. Uh, there is an armed conflict, there are refugees from Syria coming in, there was a failed coup d'etat. Uh, Europe, the European Union, first saying you can enter, you cannot enter. Uh, and uh, also noting that some EU countries like United Kingdom, for instance, uh, were taking emergency measures also when they had uh, the IRA 
IRA. Um, so are, uh, are we not uh, saying uh, too much negative about that? Should we not more understand? Should the European Union not uh, open its arms to let Turkey in? Uh, briefly, is that the question? But I think uh, as answering this, uh, we, uh, we cannot ignore that there is a difficult situation, of course. That's, the, that's not what we say. But even in a, uh, in a difficult situation, uh, it is clear that some things are clearly not allowed. And if they happen, should be punished. It's not because you have a difficult situation that you can systematically allow or even push uh, torture by the words the government said and by the fact nothing is, is punished afterwards. So I think indeed that discussion between the European Union and Turkey is a bit hypocrite sometimes. It's like a chicken and the egg, who started first and the negotiation did not work well and then there was a reason why not to do it and again. And so it is some hypocrisy in the relationship between Europe, European Union and Turkey, I admit that. But all these problems that there are not to, taken as an excuse uh, what happening, and we see often in the responses of the Turkish government towards the international reports that it said, but you forget that we have terrorists, you forget that we have a failed coup d'etat. We do not forget, but it is not an excuse to do what is happening now. There is a, a, a second question that's about universal jurisdiction. Can in European countries something be done against uh, the perpetrators of torture? That's uh, and Mushek will, will, will know that there has been in European legislations for some periods a stronger tendency towards universal jurisdiction. And so that, that uh, national uh, uh, judiciary could judge uh, perpetrators of gross violations, even if they were not present in uh, the country and even if uh, the, 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 the victim was not necessary from the nationality of that country and that universal jurisdiction is not strong enough, I believe we should try to, in the different national parliaments, to act that there is some possibility that these perpetrators could do not go unpunished. Uh, we are criticizing the impunity in Turkey, but we should also criticize the impunity uh, that we uh, have installed in our own countries actually against that. Anyhow, this was the first webinar on torture. We have a second one on impunity that is uh, organized. Uh, as you know, we have already the report of impunity is on our website. And uh, this uh, other webinar on impunity will be held on 16th of December. Everyone is welcome. I wish you a very happy and fructuous day, a healthy day in this uh, period of pandemic uh, situation. And I wish you all the good luck and thank you for joining us uh, for this webinar. Thank you very much.